Hey folks, Pat here from DNS. This Madison area fishing report is current as of March 1st. Well, we got a whole bunch of announcements to go through first, a lot of them from the DNR. So we'll just kind of dig into that quick and knock them out uh, before we get to the report. But um, your license you bought last year for 23-24 is good through March 31st of this year. But if you want to get a jump on 24-25, those licenses did go on sale today. So uh, you can go on the Go Wild website here, easy enough, just log on and Get, get your license taken care of that way. Otherwise, if you're feeling technologically challenged, feel free to swing by the shop and we can get you set up that way. I did have uh, DNR Warden Matt Kashalik uh, send me an email reminding that uh, Dane County Refuges are, are closing as of today. Uh, and they will be closed at least through um, the opener, which is May 4th. Some of them open May 16th. Stay tuned for that. I'll, I'll try to keep you posted. But anyway, uh, starting today, Areas that are closed are uh, below Lake Wingra and Wingra Creek at the spillway there, below the Tenny Locks on the Ahara River, the Ahara River below um, Wabisa at Babcock, and then um, the Dunkirk Dam. And so th this has a little map here. Um, so you can see here, Tenny Park Locks, it says 900 feet down the river. You might as well just consider that all the way to East Johnson, just to, the Johnson Street Bridge, just to play it safe. Uh, Madison, um, or Lake Wingra, Refuge is, you can see this is the spillway here where the muskies always jump up, a little area above that, but then all the way down to Arboretum Drive, that whole area is closed to protect spawning fish. Uh, down in Stoughton, this is uh, just south of Stoughton on the Ahara River at the Dunkirk Bridge, a great fishing spot if you've never been down there. Um, check that out, but don't check it out until uh, after at least May 4th. Uh, then uh, below Babcock here. So this is Wabisa up here north of this area. There's Highway 51 in McFarland. And so the area below there down to this, uh, whatever this first bridge is down here, is closed until uh, May 4th at least. So got that. Um, also, a uh, big announcement. I made a post about this last night, uh, but the DNR dropped off posters uh, announcing the Lake Mendota panfish daily bag limit will be going down to 10 fish from 25 down to 10 fish in total. So that means, you know, a mix of crappies, bluegills, and perch, whatever, you, whatever you're catching, 10 fish total, uh, effective April 1st of this year. So there's a lot of mixed feelings about this. I would have to estimate that at least 85% of the people that mention it at the shop are all for it. Um, so, and you know, we have to protect the perch and, and so we're doing our best to do that stuff. So, uh, think what you want about it. It's, uh, it's going down to 10 April 1st. Uh, the other one uh, that's new is most inland lakes, uh, the walleye limit bag, daily bag limit is going down to three fish from five. So that doesn't affect Lake Mendota. That's been, been at three fish for a while, but Lake Winona, we bought Wabisa and Kiganza, all, all inland lakes pretty much in, in the state are going down to three walleye. Many of them were at five before that. So a little bit of news there from the DNR. Um, we are in the process here at the shop of getting spring stuff out. So some of the shelves might look a little empty for now, but we are swapping out winter stuff. Do feel free to swing in the shop though. If you're looking for an auger, looking for tip ups, uh, looking for a deal on some ice stuff. If I've got it out or even if I don't just ask, uh, we just have it in boxes in the back and we can give you a pretty sweet deal on some of that stuff. Otherwise, um, some other announcements uh, going on around the area. Uh, posters on our door. The Wisconsin Muskie Expo, March 15th, 16th, and 17th up there in Wausau. The chapter, uh, Capital City Chapter of Muskies Inc. is hosting a fundraiser April 6th. Uh, the, but don't forget about the Capital City Muskie School. That's coming up right here on March 23rd at Wanake High School. Great opportunity to learn more about ice, ice, or ice fishing, uh, muskie fishing from local experts. Uh, the Stoughton uh, Garage Sale is going on this Sunday, uh, March 3rd. That's a, it's at the Stoughton VFW, and that's a cool event where it's a lot of used stuff, uh, but some new stuff too, and you can get great deals, uh, folks. And they got a breakfast buffet. You can come down there. I got this uh, raffle I have a poster for, and I, I, uh, there's no date listed on the raffle, but um, you can get tickets by calling Jeff. Um, anyway, uh, I also have the posters that you just saw listed here in the corner. Drinking with Scissors, two more events coming up there, March 19th and April 16th. Those are super fun if you are into fly tying or fly curious. Uh, those will both be at the Musk Lounge uh, coming up here, the last two events, so check those out. Uh, geez, I think that's it. So we can get to the report. Um, what a crazy weather week we had. Geez, it was 70 degrees on Tuesday with temps plummeting that night down to 14 degrees, uh, creeping up a little bit yesterday. 
uh, but 47 for the high today, and they're saying back to 70 on Sunday. So quite the roller coaster temperature-wise. It does look like next week temperatures uh, will level off to around 50 degrees most days. So great opportunity to get out and do some fishing, of course. Um, with the crazy warm temperatures uh, that we had, they really did a number on the lingering ice we had. Uh, I just saw a statistic at 44 days. Uh, I heard that this was the shortest ice season on record for Lake Monona and the second shortest for Lake Mendota on record. So uh, not great uh, for ice fishing here. Uh, but most areas around town are open, had, do have open water now. Uh, and with many anglers, without many anglers getting out, I haven't heard much in the way of fishing reports, but some panfish are being caught up shallow around town. And some folks are getting out in their boats and enjoying the rare opportunity uh, to get out and catch walleye and pike on open water before the game fish season closes. So I have been in Madison 25 years. I can't say I've ever seen that happen. So uh, that's, you know, kind of an exciting thing. So get out there this weekend, get the boat out and, and catch a fish on open water uh, before that season closes at midnight on Sunday. Uh, so no matter what species you're looking for, though, I'd look shallow this time of year and use smaller, slower presentations uh, as the water's still pretty cold. Uh, even, you know, something like a, a minnow under a slip bobber, stuff like that, or, or just slow running lures are a great way uh, to target fish this time of year in shallow water mostly. Otherwise, folks are getting up on the rivers and finding some great walleye action with fathead minnows and walleye flies being very effective and more and more popular, I've noticed. Um, as, as folks kind of warm up to that idea. Uh, speaking of warming up, Cherokee uh, Marsh warmed up and, and was open as of Tuesday. So I haven't heard much for reports out there. Bob was just in here and he was up casting up there and got um, didn't, didn't have any luck, but it's usually it's a great uh, early pike spot and panfish move in there. So, you know, a, 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 a small bobber with an ice fishing jig and a spike is a pretty good bet this time of year. Um, no word out of the 113 bridge, although this area has been open for a little while now and folks have been fishing down there, uh, folks chasing walleye, crappie, catfish. I haven't heard any reports other than a bunch of small pike down there, but that action should improve very, very soon here. And it's a great multi-species spot, um, uh, for early, especially early in the year here. Uh, on Mendota, as of Wednesday, um, Mendota was wide open basically from a line from Maple Bluff down to the Union down here. Um, where so west of there was all open water and there was a lot of chunk ice kind of stuck in the east bay over here if you want to call it that um, some of that ice with the wind yesterday blew up into warner uh, and the warner launch here just had a little bit of ice hanging out in front of the break wall there but i think you know that's going to be uh, disappearing here with these warm temps coming up maybe by the weekend you should be able to launch out of warner i would think uh, but I guess, you know, stay tuned or feel free to call the shop, 241-4225, if you uh, want any updates there. Uh, otherwise, yeah, the whole west end of the lake is open. Folks have been launching boats at Marshall, Spring Harbor, I don't know about Mendota, uh, County Park, um, University Bay has been wide open. So, yeah, get out there and do some fishing. Uh, we do have the the net, the cams the, that watch the lakes. It looks like it's open water out here, but I don't think it is. I, I think that might have maybe just been skim ice, maybe from last night or something. Um, but uh, and you can see it here by, down by the Union and stuff. Some dark ice out there, but I don't think that's open water. So either way, it's going to be open water very very soon uh, across ninety percent of Lake Mendota. So uh, that's a good sign. We're happy to uh, see folks getting out and back on the water. Uh, down on. Oh, and by the way, the Tenney Park uh, area, of course, closed uh, from the locks here all the way down to um, the Johnson Street Bridge. Uh, and then on Monona, pretty much the same deal. We're going to hear this a lot. Uh, a lot of ice on the east shoreline over here that's blown over. Um, otherwise, I haven't heard much in the way of reports, but the rest of the lake is open, including Monona Bay. Uh, the area up here where the Ahar River dumps in can be a very good uh, early season spot as fish kind of kind of stack up there. Otherwise, down on uh, Monona Bay, um, you know, shallow water here, fish moving in there, the panfish still hang out there. This is a great early, early spring uh, crappie spot, especially over along the tracks in these areas. Um, and then you got the discharge over here by the shelter uh, that comes out uh, that's, uh, you know, attracts some fish over in that area. So some good shore fishing opportunities over there. I haven't heard anything out of areas like Turville Bay or Weechawak Bay, but um, yeah, that uh, shouldn't be long. There should be some good action coming out of those areas. The Lattice Park Launch over here is open, uh, but I hear that it's very, very low. So do be careful uh, if you're going to launch over there um, because, it, yeah, the, it's so low that you can't uh, really get a boat in almost. Uh, so just be careful what you're doing. But the whole area here, you know, by, between Lattice Park, the Beltline, through the channel here, 
up into upper mud lake. I'm not sure exactly how much upper mud is open, but quite a bit of it. And the, all this area is great early ice, or I, I'm, I'm sorry, early spring spot. Um, same deal on, on Wabisa. Lake's wide open. There's some uh, ice that's blown into the east shoreline. Uh, clogging up the Babcock launch, but you could launch a boat at, at Lake Farm or Goodland. I don't think either of those places have, have piers in yet, but um, you could definitely launch a boat there if you wanted. Um, same thing down in Kiganza. It's ice-free Fish Camp County Park up here. I don't think there's a, a pier in there yet, but the, where the harder dumps in there and shallow water uh, attracts a lot of fish to that area, so that's a pretty safe bet. Otherwise, yeah, like I haven't heard any reports out of there. Otherwise, over on Kashkanang, uh, the Indian Ford Dam, I've been hearing about a few walleye and sauger showing up and some pike uh, backing up over here at the dam. Um, up on Kashkanang, I heard the lake over there is ice-free now. Uh, I haven't heard any reports out of the lake itself, but folks fishing near the mouth of the river here, up through Blackhawk Island, Fort Atkinson, and up to the Jefferson Dam are getting good action for walleye and some sauger, a lot of sheep's head too, uh, a lot of short fish from what I hear. But um, look, when you're fishing these areas, look for deeper holes and corners, uh, like I said, uh, from the Jefferson Dam all the way down to Lake Kashkanang, uh, including the Jefferson Dam. Folks have been using walleye um, fatheads, and I do have, you do carry the mag, magnum fatheads, so the big ones here now are also popular. But walleye flies, again, uh, very, very popular this time of year, and a lot more people uh, warming up to that idea and catching a lot of walleyes because of it. Um, otherwise, up on the river, kind of the same deal there. All the dams are stacked with walleyes right now and sauger and a lot of other fish too. Uh, still a lot of short fish, and a lot of females have moved up, but they're getting nice fish. Uh, the Prairie du Sac Dam, um, Wisconsin Dells Dam, Castle Rock, Piedmont. But, um, you know, a jig and a minnow, uh, with fathead on there is a great, great classic uh, combination. Uh, or a drop shot rig I've been hearing is working good with a minnow on it. Uh, but also walleye flies, again, great, great, uh, great river uh set up there for, to, to catch some good walleyes. Lake Wisconsin, uh, wide open as well. I did hear about some ice lingering down here by like uh, the fingers and some of your shallow, shallow areas there, but uh, that'll be gone soon. Um, otherwise, yeah, like I said, the river is, has, has fish in it. Look for deeper holes. Um, walleyes stacked up in there. Otherwise, at the dam, dam, dams, Wisconsin Dells, Castle Rock, and Petemwell all holding fish. Um, otherwise, over to uh, the Mississippi River, uh, walleyes are stacked up at the dams. A lot, a lot of people fishing over there, it sounds like. Getting some good sauger, good walleye over there. Uh, the perch bite is usually something that doesn't even happen until like mid-March or so, uh, or even late March. But uh, Kurt Phillip, who a lot of you probably remember, used to work at the shop here, uh, sent me a text of some action he's been having over there. And geez, look at some of these perch. I mean, just killing it. And uh, some giants. Look at look at this guy. Ooh, I, I guess I should say gal, more likely. But uh, yeah, I mean, the one up here on top, that's a nice perch. The one down here, that's a jumbo. So they get some real nice perch over there. And uh, yeah, it's happening. So get over there and enjoy that while it's going on. Um, let's see. Milwaukee. Uh, harbors are slamming with uh, uh, browns and steelhead over there. So if you want to give that a shot, some great action in a lot of your harbors up and down the East Coast. Otherwise, browns and steelhead are moving into, this, into the tributaries. So, you know, the... Um, what do you call it? Uh, Menominee River, uh, Milwaukee River. Um, God, I don't know why I'm blanking on the on the river down here by Racine right now, but you know all, all the rivers up and down the East Coast all have fish in right now. Uh, also, you know uh, the season closes here. Like I said, uh, game fish season closes on uh, Sunday at midnight. But uh, you know, get up here to Green Bay, uh, De Pere area, and, and slam some giant walleyes out there while you still can. Um, some great opportunities for that. Uh, otherwise, I, that pretty much does it for you know, warm water fishing. But like I mentioned in the, in the in, well, I don't think I did mention in the intro, uh, early season catch and release trout is open and some great opportunities out there. Streams are running low and clear right now, uh, just like everywhere else. Uh, low water seems to be the theme of, of this early season uh, part of the year anyway. But um, this time of year, your bite window is going to be about 10, 10 to 2. Uh, but with most of the snow pretty much melted and uh, some warmer temps in the forecast, the stream streams will start to stabilize and uh, we'll get some prime conditions uh, to do some early season trout fishing, which of course means uh, all fish need to be uh, released as soon as they're caught. Uh, if you're working on uh, the spinning gear side of things, a Rapala countdown or a crappie size tube jig work slowly through deep pools can be super effective. Otherwise on the fly side of things, uh, drifting woolly buggers and nymphs through deeper tail outs and pools is a pretty safe bet. But if you really want to catch fish, I, you know, I say this every, every report, 
Uh, pink squirrels are good, a uh, great option for uh, winter fishing. But, um, you know, we do have these flies here. This is a, called a, a hot bead sow bug. Uh, and what really makes this a good winter fly, too, is, is the orange bead, you know, kind of resembles an egg. Looks a lot like a, a fly that I tie called a pink stinker, um, which is basically just a variation of a pink squirrel. Uh, but any, anything like this with like a, a hot colored bead, a small little nymphy body on the back is going to produce a lot of fish. So we got these here at the shop swing by and pick some up. I think that's it for the report. Again, feel free to call the shop, 241-4225. If you want us to expand on anything here, if you have any questions or you're looking for, for uh, maybe a little more current information. Otherwise, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. P post your comments and uh, catches below. Love to see that stuff. Uh, but again, thanks for tuning in, and we will talk to you next week. Take care.